So in this presentation, we're going to talk about the Eagle Scout rank application process. And then we'll also have a little bit of a discussion about how Eagle Scout references are administered. Sounds like fun. <laughs> you don't get out much, do you? <laughs> no, I really do. <laughs> to begin with, we're going to talk about what happens before the Eagle Board of Review. First, the Scout must complete all the requirements. He then prepares the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook. Then the application for Eagle is completed. All the required signatures are obtained. Then the application is submitted to the Council Service Center for verification. And once verified, the Board of Review is scheduled. And then the references are contacted. And the Board of Review is held. Now let's look at the way that process works in a little more detail. Now here's a list of things to consider when filling out the application. It's something that uh, are commonly called red flag items. The first are dates. Make sure that the birth date, first class through life boards of review, all merit badges, all position of responsibility dates are all correct and complete on the form. The next red flag is signatures. Make sure that the applicant has signed the form as well as the unit leader and the unit committee chair. Make sure the references are listed. There are five if the scout is not currently employed. If not affiliated with an organized religion, then the parent or guardian provides this reference. The 21 mirror badges being used for the rank of Eagle must be listed along with the date on which each was earned. The position of responsibility must be one of those listed for Eagle Scout rank and must relate to the unit where the scout is registered and active. And finally, all the attachments, the service project workbook, the scout statement of his life ambitions and life purpose, and a listing of other positions, honors, and awards will be sent along with the packet. Okay, so once all these issues are taken care of, then the application's ready to send in, right? Yeah, that's right. We want to copy the application, all the attachments, and we want to retain a copy of the application packet. I've never had a scout lose anything. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important paperwork, and a lot of work has gone into creating the packets. You do want to make sure to keep a copy. And then you deliver the original promptly to the Council Service Center. It's best to deliver it by hand, but if that's not practical, it needs to go by certified mail. Is there any kind of rush on getting it up there? Well, I wouldn't say you need to rush, but timeliness is especially critical. Probably especially if the scout is nearing his 18th birthday? That's right, and a lot of them are, <laughs> aren't they? First of all, the candidate shouldn't have to wait. And if he's approaching or he has already turned 18, sending materials late can kind of imply that the work continued afterward. So if possible, like I said, everything should be hand-delivered. Otherwise, send it by registered or certified mail. So everything is checked against the council records. If the information in ScoutNet or the council files are incomplete, the scout or the unit may be asked to provide certificates, blue cards, or other suitable proof that the merit badges and ranks were actually earned and the dates are accurate. If everything is correct, the council provides a certification signature, files a copy of the application, and then sends the original with the service project workbook and other items, such as letters of reference, to the Board of Review Chair or other designated volunteer. The board can be scheduled only after the council certified application is received. So part of this whole application is the listing of references. Right. The scout have to contact those references and get a letter or something from them? The scout may assist by sending or delivering an addressed envelope with instructions and maybe a form for the references to complete, but that's really the limit of his participation. He's not responsible for follow-through or any other part of the process. Okay, so who actually contacts the references and is responsible for getting their input? It's up to the council's designated representatives to make every effort to collect the responses from the references that the scout has listed. And this can be done through the mail or it can be done through a phone call. It'll be up to what your council advancement committee decides. What about just sending them an email? For reasons of privacy and confidentiality, electronic submissions are discouraged. That makes sense. Electronic submissions would be too easily shared. You mentioned confidentiality. Who gets to see these reference letters? Well, the completed reference responses of any kind are the property of the council, and only Board of Review members and those officials with a specific need get to read them. The responses are not ever viewed or returned to the scout. Doing so could discourage the submission of negative information. 
and for the same reason those providing references aren't given the option of waiving confidentiality. That means they aren't given the option of showing their reference to the scout. Okay, that makes sense. So when the Board of Review is over, what happens to those reference documents? Once a review has been held, the responses are going to be returned to the Council after the Eagle Scout credentials are released. So are references required for any rank other than Eagle? Nope. In Boy Scouting, advancement references are required only for the Eagle Scout rank. So you said references are required for the Eagle Scout rank. What if the references don't respond? If, after a reasonable effort, no response can be obtained from any references, the Board of Review must go on without them. It may not be postponed or denied for this reason. What about asking the Scout to submit additional references or replacement references? The Scout may not be asked to submit additional references or to provide replacements. The Board of Review has to go on without them. So, just to confirm, once the application has been certified by Council and the references have been contacted, then we can schedule the Board of Review. That's right. Now we'll discuss the composition and procedure for an Eagle Board of Review in the presentation on Boards of Review. So if the Board of Review approves a candidate, they sign the application. The signed application, reference letters, and other confidential information are then returned to the local Council. The Service Project Workbook and Statement of Ambitions and Life Purpose can be returned to the Scout. If approval is denied, all the materials are returned to the Council. And then at the Council, the Scout Executive signs the application, certifying that proper procedures were followed. The application is then entered into ScoutNet, filed locally, and sent electronically to the National Advancement Team. In special cases, such as lone Scouts or Scouts more than six months past their 18th birthday, the Council must submit the application via mail, email, or fax for manual processing. The Advancement Team validates all applications received and generates the Eagle Scout credentials. So we hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you need more information, you can look at the Eagle Scout Rank application, the Eagle Scout Service Project Workbook, and of course, the Guide to Advancement. There are also presentations available about the Eagle Scout Project and the Eagle Scout Border Review. If you have any questions about the information presented in this or any of the other presentations, begin by asking your district and council advancement administrator. And if you stump them, you can always contact the National Advancement Team at the email shown here, advancement.team at scouting.org. So until next time, this is Lisa. And this is Clark. And next time, I'm still going to be Lisa. <laughs> and I'll probably still be Clark, but tune in anyways. <laughs>